So we've had a look at the isometric mid-fire pull. What I want to do now is just give you a bit of a, um, I guess a reminder, I suppose, or a bit of a reference for some counter movement jump force plate um, data analysis. So as with the last one, we're just going to open our text file in Excel and essentially create a template, right? So we can save as I know you've got the, the, the basis of one of these, but um, if you're stuck on any element of it, hopefully this will give you a bit of a reminder. So again, we're going to get rid of these. I'm going to change this to sample. This can be useful to help us find values at certain points. I'm just going to change the format on some of this again. Uh, and I appreciate it, changing the format like this might seem a little bit boring. You might be wondering what on earth am I doing this on this recording for? But um, you might not know how to do it, I guess. So I'm um, pretty much just trying to do it so that you have an idea or at least a, a resource or a reminder or whatever you want to call it for how to do these things. So let's just make this a bit bigger and zoom in a little bit. That's going to be our left force. This will be our right force, and of course we then create our force variable by adding these two together. So that plus that. And as with everything else, start from the bottom and scroll up to the top to create our figure, because we want to visualize it to make sure um, it's representative of a counter movement jump in areas, which is cool. So. What I'm going to do, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's create another one. What I'm going to do is just format that a little bit. What I meant to do is delete that. Again, boring, but it might be another, hopefully serve as another reminder for you or a resource or whatever you want to call it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the, the landing bit. We can see it happens before row 3000, right? Uh, so we can see that actually, let's see what happens if we change the max value to 2000. Okay, it's not quite high enough, so it's 2200. Okay, cool. And then we can change this to, let's do 2500 for now. Cool. And then add some tick marks. So there's other bits and pieces. So number, we only want that to have, oh, we don't want it to have any decimal places. <clears throat> and we want to add some tick marks. And again, we can change the color of those uh, and their thickness with this option here. Okay. So remember, this isn't just for your benefit. This is going to be for whoever you share it with as well. You want to make it try and or try and make it as, as neat and clear as possible. And and while we're in a formatting frame of mind, why don't we just change this here to a blue line or whatever colour you want? Again, so it stands out a little bit for you. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker as well, just because I can. Um, so again, I'll tell you what I didn't do. This is Sunday the 30th of October. And what do you do on a Sunday morning? You make videos to help your students understand or give to provide a resource of how you process your force data in Excel. Anyway, so we're, we're talking about Thursday session earlier with the isometric mid five pool processing video. And obviously this is looking at the counter movement jump. Um, what we might want to do is if we click on that graph, we can go up to the chart design and we can add a few bits here just to make sure it's as clear as possible. So our axis titles, the primary um, horizontal one is sample. We can click on that and make that a bit bigger if we want to. And then let's add a chart title for our Y axis. 
primary vertical, and that's just force. And we can get rid of that. Okay. And again, we can click back on it, enlarge it, and make it black. So there's going to be no doubt of what this figure is now showing us. Um, what we can do now then is we can start thinking about processing our data so actually trying to make some sort of sense out of it if we just want to get our peak force well we can use the um, we can use the combination of max and index so equals max and we're going to be looking for the maximum value in our force data but from row one or sample one to let's see 2500 right so if you just wanted the peak force from this so you could then um, compare it to the peak force from an isometric midfly pool and then calculate the dynamic strength index then obviously that's all you need to do but we're going to do a little bit more than that so I'm going to try and give you a, a bit of a structure to do that with let's look at the start of the stance phase and the end of the stance phase. Oops, sorry, I left the space after that. It's going to format differently. So we can see that this jumper stands still for the first 1,000 samples of his jump. There's a little bit of a blip there, but it's not the end of the world. So we can pop that. Sample one as the start. Sample 1,000 as the end. Okay, we've identified our stance phase. We can then calculate the stance mean is going to be in newtons uh, and remember that's going to be exactly the same as our jumper's body weight so we're going to use a combination of average and index for this and there's the formula for you there okay it's going to be useful if you if you try and do all the formatting that I did and make sure that all the headers and, the, and the, the first sample is in the, the same cells as I've got here. It's going to be easier to follow along with this kind of stuff. So if you haven't done for whatever reason, just sort of change it around a bit. We can calculate the jumper's mass, which is going to be in kilograms. And that will just be their body weight divided by the acceleration of gravity. I'm just going to format these numbers because they're starting a little bit scruffy already and we can calculate the stance SD which will tell us how still our jumper stood and to do that we can literally click back into our stance mean calculation and if we go out to the formula bar and click it three times it'll select it we can just copy press the escape button and then paste it into here replacing this average function with Excel standard deviation which is STDEV and then we can calculate the stance ratio. So it's going to be a ratio of the standard deviation to the mean. So we are going to take that standard deviation and divide it by that mean. And this is going to tell us how still our jumper stood. Okay, so 0.59% is that ratio. Um, that's pretty decent, yeah. I think we need, pro I would argue that we need under 1% if possible. However, we don't actually know what sort of effect this has on our calculations just yet, but it does give us a, uh, an idea. Um, hang on, I'm trying to tell you two things at the same time there. We don't actually know what sort of effect this has on our calculations, and this is some, some, some of the research that we're doing at the moment to see how, you know, whether a noisy standing still phase actually messes with the, um, the quality of the data we get at the end of it. However, it still gives us a pretty decent idea of what's going on, okay? So, what can we do now? There's a few other things we want to calculate. So, we want the stance maximum. We want the location for this. We want the force minimum. And I'm going to tell you where all these are in a moment. We want the location for that. We want the force maximum. We want the location for that. We want the start force. Chain, oh, where are we? 
change direction. So whether the force increases or decreases, we can then calculate the start threshold. And then we can find the start location. And then from that, uh, we can also figure out where the um, takeoff is as well. Or in this case, it's going to be the force less than 10 newtons. Okay, let's just move this over a little bit. And we can do all of that by doing this one first. So this is what we we'll come back um, and do in the next video because I'm conscious that I'm waffling on.